well what you hope you might have achieved at the end of 12 months? Yes, absolutely. The biggest challenge is about uh, getting projects off the ground. So uh, we, we spoke earlier about some proposals that have gone in and with uh, some luck these proposals will be approved. Uh, the worst bit of all is when you uh, apply for some funding or for some opportunity and you fail to get it. It is devastating and, and uh, you have a day or two of mourning and then you pick yourself back up and you write another one. This is what you do. So since we spoke last, I've heard the outcomes of two research grant applications. Um, one bombed uh, absolutely abysmally, actually. In fact, they published the ranking tables, and this was in the bottom 25%. It's a, it's a first for me to be in the bottom 25%. But anyway, that wasn't funded. And very fortunately, another one uh, that I did apply for was funded by E.ON the power company. I'm uh, very happy indeed about that. Uh, that's about the energy bags. It's this idea of storing compressed air in flexible containers under the sea. And uh, to, to me it's the first piece in a chain of events now that I see happening. And uh, I, 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 th I think it may lead to good things. Okay, well as with most research grants, you actually say at the outset what it is that you're going to deliver. So I'm going to build some prototype bags. I'm going to test a pair of them uh, I will call it back-to-back -back test on land, so there'll be a, a bag A will inflate uh, while bag B deflates and then we'll pump the air the other way around. So you're not actually creating any new energy, you're just exchanging pres pressurized air between one and the other. And you can do that then many, many times and see whether a good design of bag can be come up with. And then we're going to get one of these bags and uh, put it in the sea and pump it up uh, offshore. And uh, I'll use a wave-powered device to pump it up and I'll put a little trigger on it so that when it gets full, it just lets all the air out uh, and then it pumps itself up again with, with, um, with the wave power again. And that will demonstrate to those who, who are skeptical about it that it really can work and that it can stand many cycles. And one of the calculations I've done in the past, and, and if I could get people to believe me that this calculation is right, this whole thing will take off, is that if you get a big bag of this sort and you pump it up 40 times, if it can stand 40 fills, it will have paid for itself. So, uh, to my mind, really that's what I want to get to. I want to make one of these bags, plant it up the seabed, connect up a little wave power device to it so it will pump it up uh, more than 40 times, uh, let the air out 40 times, and, uh, and that will be a success for me. For the thing that's on land, pro the two bags on land will be about four meter radius base, so relatively small. The thing that's going to plant in the sea, probably about 10 meter radius base and I've got a tame uh, fabric company that's going to work with me, is eager to work with me to, to capitalize on this possibility. Well, the, the, the tests, uh, 18 months, I would suggest that uh, in 18 months there'll be uh, a real uh, bag operating. The grant is 300,000 euros. Uh, the grant is uh, phenomenally generously given by E.ON, I think. Uh, it's very for far-sighted of them to, to invest in research of this nature. They're not demanding any uh, rights for the intellectual property that's generated. I, I, I do need to chase more, I need to chase more vigorously. Um, I, I held an event in the university in November 2006 when I presented the whole scheme of, uh, the whole scheme that I call ICARES, Integrated Compressed Air Renewable Energy Systems. And that says, well, we should store compressed air, but we should get that compressed air by compressing directly from renewables. And the general reaction to that meeting was great idea it's too complicated because there are too many pieces to put in place all at once and my struggle since November 2006 has been to just get one piece in place to get people to believe that as soon as I have one piece in place and one piece working well then you can uh, go to investors and to the funding bodies and say help me to develop a wave powered a really good wave powered compressor I can make a wave power compressor right now. I've got a project student working on that. He's doing a fabulous job. We'll have something that's working, not very efficient, but it doesn't have to be efficient. It will do the job for this project. Right, uh, it, the message came by email, and uh, that's always less intense than, than opening a letter or, or a phone call. So, so that was broken to me gently. And in fact, the, the decision-making process went on for quite a long time. So I knew that a decision was being made on the 20th of February. 
I waited all day on the 21st very anxiously to hear, and it tends to be the case with research grant applications that good news travels quicker than bad news, so the longer it takes, the worse it gets. And then I couldn't help myself, I sent an email to the organisers and asked them were they in a position to tell us what the outcomes were, and I got an email back by return, very impressed, it was after 6 o'clock German time, uh, saying yes you've got it, and uh, I, I was absolutely overjoyed at the time, absolutely overjoyed. That's always a bottle of red wine, that is. So that was a, a nice bottle of uh, red wine that particular evening. There we are. This is the email itself. It's entitled Research Initiative Accepted Project, so that already looks good. And I opened it up and I got as far as line one and just said Yahoo. It's sort of implicit in the title. I am delighted to inform you. These are the key words. Our panel of experts felt that your project was closely aligned with our criteria for this call and therefore I'm delighted to inform you that your proposal harvesting and storing energy offshore in the form of compressed air has been successful. Absolutely marvellous.